reporting live from Heaton Park. <laughs> It gives the opportunity for everybody to contribute their stories, their pictures, recordings of yourself speaking about a place that's special to you. All of these things can be used to really enrich a listing. It gives you something new to kind of like discover and explore and gives you a new interest and a newfound love in a space and helps you strengthen that connection that you have somewhere. My name's Rianne Fasanik and I am the founder of Black Girls Hike and my contribution to the list today is Heaton Park, one of my favourite parks. I think it's the best park in Manchester. A park, it's like really at the heart of a community, isn't it? Because for a lot of people, it's their only opportunity to actually get outside and it's like the only green space that they have. And also it's kind of like an introduction to the outdoors as well, because like your local park, once you've explored it, you might want to just kind of like explore a bit further. So it is really, really important. And also it's obviously it's great for your mental and your physical health. I'm Angela Barnes, I'm a stand-up comedian, and we are at the Meeting House, which is part of the Sussex University campus. And I've chosen this as my favourite listed building for lots of reasons, really. I was a student here at the University of Sussex back in 1996, and this is the building where I cast my first ever vote in a general election, and then skip forward to 2021, it's the building that I got married in. I'm a fan of brutalist architecture. I even chose it as my specialist subject on Celebrity Mastermind. And people sometimes turn their noses up when I tell them that I love brutalism. But you can't look at a space like this and not think that it's beautiful. And maybe that's because I grew up in the 70s and 80s around concrete playgrounds, concrete subways. They touch that nostalgia nerve in me more than any ornate palace does really. Hi, I'm Patrick. I'm a PhD student in history and my chosen place for the Missing Pieces project is Alexandra Palace in London. So we're now here in Ali Pali's Great Hall where all the concerts are, but it also has something of a hidden history because it was used in World War I as a camp for German and Austrian internees who were branded by the aliens act as enemy aliens and had to be essentially incarcerated for the period of the war and internees from all across the British Isles were brought here. It's this huge area full of people. The internee orchestra is perhaps the most interesting part of the, the hidden history of the place because it was founded in 1915, I believe, so a year into the war, and included, I think, at its peak, nearly 40-something musicians, which is pretty good going for an internment camp. Of course, not all buildings are that obvious. Here we are in a park in Gravesend, but what is going on underneath the park is what's interesting. And this is the Gravesend Civil Defence Control Centre. And this is where, in the event of nuclear war during the Cold War period, people would have gathered in order to organise fire and rescue, feeding people, how survivors would have been looked after. So you might wonder why a building that was built in 1954 relatively recently would be listed. Well, because it's a part of our history and it's important that future generations see what was happening here and that's why it needs to be preserved, that they can come and learn about what happened during that Cold War period.
Hi, my name's Kate Durand. I'm captain of the Alexandra Park women's football team. North London's finest amateur football club. This is an absolutely iconic place to play football. It's also really important to us because it's where we think the first ever British women's football club game was held in 1895. This has been one of the biggest years for British women's football ever. Why don't we reenact it and use the local women's football team to play in the game and get in costumes and celebrate that amazing event in 1895. I love this idea of this Missing Pieces project where we realise that things aren't just historically significant because of some sort of event that happened. But actually every day we sort of have a connection to what happened and people have been making memories here and experiencing significant events every single day. The Missing Pieces project is important because we've all got different stories to tell about places and they're all an important part of the picture. A lot of people probably don't realise that there's so many important and significant things that are actually on their doorstep with loads of history to them. So by being on the list, it really opens them up to the public and to learning more about their history. And that's what the Missing Pieces Project's all about.